Robert Mueller's report has been turned in. Of course, we've talked about this uh, for the last couple of weeks, that it is going to be DOA, those are the, the words I used on the Sunday Wire, dead on arrival. And of course, that's exactly what happened. So the Mueller report is finally here, Mike. And unfortunately uh, for the Democratic Party and for the Never Trump lobby, uh, the report recommends no further indictments and finds no Trump-Russia collusion, no Russian collusion, basically. That's it. So here we are two, two and a half years later from the investigation. And, uh, and how much money? Um, well, on paper, uh, they're claiming it's uh, 25 million, uh, but I think it's uh, substantially more than that. But it's not just the money, Mike. It's the amount of political capital that's been expended. It's the amount of time that has been devoted to this by uh, legislators, congressmen, senators, bureaucrats, civil service, and the media. The amount, of the, the value in media time that has covered this uh, non-event. Uh, it, it was an event, but there was no underlying crime ever, okay? We knew this from the beginning, but th think of all the resources that have been expended on this, Mike. Could have been allocated towards so many other different issues. Healthcare in America right, is so, just one example. So, yeah. so one of the criticisms of Brexit has been the fact that everything has stopped for Brexit, no other parliamentary business going on, uh, and in fact, perhaps some things going on under the under the surface that we aren't aware of because of the, the noise created by Brexit. Is it fair to say that in the United States you've had exactly the same situation with no uh, proper political process, no new legislation of any particular note because everybody's been so focused on on nothing? On in, in that sense, Mike, it's, it's very, very similar. The only difference is Brexit was real and uh, <laughs> Trump, Russia collusion was not. So uh, that was the only difference, a little bit of a reality. Let's look at the, the reaction from this. Uh, the reaction from the media has been total meltdown uh, over the last couple of days. So this is the Mueller media meltdown. Let's ha take a look at this. So here's what's been happening. So the reframing is the end of the beginning for Trump, not the beginning of the end. And you hear this repeated over and over on multiple reports in the United States. This is the end of the beginning for Trump. So it's so they're saying they're only getting started. So that's uh, NBC News right there. Sherrod, so the end of the beginning, mark that down. That's your talking point. You need to learn that and have that emblazoned on your brain, on your cortex, okay, going forward. So. This is CNN, and I'm just going to show you the level of manipulation here. It's very subtle, but most people won't notice it unless they're looking or they understand what CNN is. So emboldened, Trump's presidency enters a new era. The headline is uh, actually very true. Uh, the president is very emboldened, as is his base. But look at the graphic below. Let's take a closer look at that graphic below. What does that say? conspire or coordinated with Russia in its efforts to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election. So just from a visual point of view, when you see that as a main graphic flashing on screen with CNN, you'll, you'll think that somehow this, is, this report contains that accusation mm. and that that's a, one of the final conclusions of the report. That's just, this is how CNN operates. It is subliminal, it's propaganda, and even though the report has come back exonerating uh, the president and all of his associates for collusion with Russia. CNN is nonetheless putting forward a different uh, subliminal uh, propaganda campaign here to give you uh, the opposite conclusion of what's actually in the report. That is CNN at its finest. And this has been going on all weekend across many of the media outlets. So this is the letter that, uh, that was sent uh, from the Attorney General. Uh, and well, here is the quote that CNN has lifted. And when you look at the full quote, you discover the context is somewhat different because the full quote says, the special counsel's investigation did not find that the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with Russia uh, in its efforts to influence the 2016 US presidential election. So that is somewhat different. They, they simply chopped the, the, the key contextual part of that sentence off, put a dot, 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 an ellipsis at the start, and, and, and implied that, that implied the implication was clear that Trump had quote, conspired or coordinated with uh, Russia. And uh, so even in their defeat, uh, they insist on flogging this dead horse. The next question was, uh, uh, was 
had he committed any kind of crime, had he in any way uh, prevented Mueller from doing his, uh, his job. Uh, and again, the special counsel states, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, well, it also does not exonerate him. Now, this became a major talking point as well in the mainstream press over there. Um, but of course, while Mueller has said that it doesn't exonerate him, you still live in a common law jurisdiction and therefore there's a presumption of innocence. Well, you, th you would think that, Mike, but leave this on screen. I just want to point out uh, that's not the case anymore. This, what, was, what you've highlighted here, Mike, look, looks to me, I would call that a bullet left in the chamber. Right. In other words, that's a political caveat that's been added as an addendum onto what is the conclusion of the report. So this is just basically sowing doubt, just leaving it out there, letting it hang out there. And so the media have, have looked at this, and that's just a pound of red meat for the media. And they're, they're going to feed off that last phrase, Mike, for at least the next couple of weeks, and it will fuel all sorts of uh, speculative reports. So we're so looking forward to all that. Exhibit A and Exhibit B, a little lesson here. And let's look at Exhibit A, BBC, breaking news. President Trump campaign did not conspire with Russia during the 2016 ele election, said Robert Mueller's report says. Wow, I'm actually giving credit to the BBC here for accurate reporting and not spinning this. This is a very rare occasion on the UK column, so do take note, everybody. <laughs> you might want to screenshot this. Exhibit B, the Associated Press, breaking Justice Department letter, Mueller does not exonerate Trump of obstruction of justice or find that he committed a crime. Is that, what level of deception is that? Can you make that one out, Mike? That, that is a pretty carefully crafted uh, tweet, it has to be said. And what would be the effect of that Associated Press statement? Well, the effect is, if it's carelessly read, the effect is to uh, put in the minds of the reader uh, that he's not been exonerated, therefore he has got some kind of crime to answer for. He's guilty, basically. Yes. So the BBC actually wins uh, here. <laughs> so the BBC has been exonerated in a way. Uh, so good reporting by the BBC. Well done, well done. So continuing, well, that's fake news on the part of Associated Press. Fake news for the AP. Sorry, guys. So moving on, Mueller's marks. Now, this is important here. Who are Mueller's marks? Let's take a look at these gentlemen here. Michael Flynn, George Papadopoulos, Rick Gates, Michael Cohen, Paul Manafort. Guilty, 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 guilty. All of these are Trump campaign officials or associates, uh, and they've been all found guilty. Now, the opposition have said, well, th these are uh, the results of the Mueller investigation. Trump is... Uh, uh, dirty, uh, crimes have been committed. This is a completely corrupt White House. But we have to point out to everybody, those are process crimes. These are crimes which have resulted from the investigation itself. Uh, just in the case of Michael Flynn, uh, he was illegally recorded uh, with a bogus FISA warrant uh, during the campaign. And so when he went to testify with the Mueller investigation, he wasn't aware he had already been wiretapped. And so his statements on the wiretap months before didn't match up with the statements he gave to the Mueller investigation. And suddenly they arrested him for lying to the Mueller investigation, or in this case, lying to the vice president was the specific charge. So these are process crimes. There's no Russian collusion with any of these associates above here. Now you have to ask the question, Mike. If you knew there was no Russian collusion beforehand and you saw the, the things that they're getting them for, which is uh, not filing taxes correctly or sort of financial paperwork or lying to Congress, um, so that none of these crimes would have happened mm. if not for the investigation, which we now find out is, was, was started on a false premise, basically. There was never any Trump-Russia collusion. So if, if you just targeted them on those techni techni technical process crimes, that would look like political targeting, wouldn't it? It would look like a witch hunt, right? Uh, well, indeed. And in fact, if, if you're suggesting that Trump, or if, not you, if Mueller is suggesting that Trump uh, has not been exoner exonerated for impeding the Mueller investigation, but there was no, uh, there was nothing to investigate in the first place, how is it possible to impede an investigation which is based on nothing? Well, this this is the point of this whole uh, obstruction talking point. Right. Um, it would be like uh, 
accusing someone of a, a resisting arrest um, for a f resisting a fake arrest or resisting a wrongful arrest. Um, and you can't charge them with resisting arrest if it was a wrongful arrest because mm. um, they were in the right. So in this case, Jay Sekulow, uh, who is Trump's personal attorney, basically uh, said that their legal position is uh, there's no underlying crime. This is from the, from the attorney general's office. We're told, therefore, there's no obstruction. Mm. So you can't be guilty of obstruction if there was no underlying crime to begin with. And that seems to be the case uh, with the release of this report. So, uh, and there's moving on onto Mueller's marks, the next one. Here is 12 Russian agents indicted in the Mueller investigation. Everyone remembers this story. These are the Russian hackers, the GRU hackers working out of a boiler room in St. Petersburg, the internet research agency, doing all sorts of nefarious things, uh, putting up Facebook ads and, and, the, and the like. So they were uh, somehow indicted via this investigation. Um, so this is kind of a meaningless indictment, Mike, because A, they're never going to stand trial in the, in the United States. You can indict as many people as you want mm -hmm. in a foreign country, and it's not really going to mean anything. They, don't, they haven't actually produced any actual evidence of any crime. They claim they put malware uh, onto DNC servers and, and all these sort of things. So there's a lot of accusations here. And this particular article has these sort of graphics where they're claiming that Russian intelligence officers hacked the email accounts of Hillary Clinton. They're so careless that they left their fingerprints all over it, supposedly, but we can't really see the evidence. They used online personas and WikiLeaks to release stolen emails and documentation. That's the claim. That's the whole basis of this. Hacked into computer networks of the DNC. That's the key one. Hacked into the DNC. That's one of the foundational pillars of the entire investigation, okay, the, the Russian interference, Russian collusion investigation. Mind you, Mike, even if they were GRU hackers, and even if they did hack into, uh, the, they're not breaking Russian law, <laughs> and also people do this. Uh, don't tell me that uh, the British and the U.S. governments don't do this as well. Uh, so this is what they do. So even then, it shouldn't be out of the ordinary. The real question is, did they uh, change the outcome of the election? Mm -hmm. Was it their objective to change the outcome of the election? They can't even show that there was uh, intent to change the outcome of election. They say, quote, to sow chaos amongst, ele what, what does that mean? To sow, sought to sow chaos, sought to influence. What does this mean? This means nothing. Mm. Uh, so they can't even say that they interfered on behalf of any one candidate. So uh, that, that point alone is ridiculous. But this has been carried through, these talking points, for the last two years. This just shows you how far we are away from reality. Let's go back then and the final point on here. The claim of the DNC hack. Well, it just so happens, Mike, that last week on Consortium News here, veterans for intelligence professionals for sanity. This is a group led by a former CIA analyst, Ray McGovern. Uh, and this report was released last week, Mueller's Forensic Free Findings. Okay, what does this report uh, prove? Well, let's look at what they found. We have examined 500 DNC email files stored on WikiLeaks site. Okay, and what did they find when they observed that these uh, data show that the DNC emails posted by WikiLeaks went through a storage device like a thumb drive and were physically removed uh, before WikiLeaks posted the emails uh, on the World Wide Web. So what they're saying here is that it's not possible that they were hacked remotely. And why is that? It has to do with uh, a type of a metadata signature uh, known as FAT, FAT files. And they said that the speeds were so great, it would have to have been a local transfer. It couldn't have been a remote hack. So it would be a physical impossibility. The findings of this report by VIPs have been verified by two former NSA technical advisors, not one, but two heads of uh, technical NSA. One of them is William Binney, which many people might be familiar with. This is what they found. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the DNC was a leak, not a hack in the summer of 2016. That is kind of a big deal, Mike, because that changes the entire narrative uh, altogether. So not only do we not have 
Russian collusion with any members of the Trump uh, team or any associates or any cabinet members. We don't have any of that. So now we don't even have a DNC hack. Okay, so, so what did the Russians do? Did they do anything? Well, so far there's no evidence that they did. Uh, and if you want to dig in a little bit deeper to that story, go to Consortium News. So in summation, right, Russia Gate, uh, Trump Russia collusion, the last two and a half years, and political capital expended and time spent, money spent. And what do we have with this whole story? What is this? Two and a half years of what? Fake news. Yeah, actually, it's fake news. And what I'm going to go even further. This is the biggest political hoax in U.S. history. You are looking at the biggest political hoax ever in the United States. And, and, and they're going to keep milking it uh, as much as they can. But, but my, my final takeaway point, Mike, is Donald Trump is going to use this as a, like a, a, when you roll up a paper and he's going to whack the Democrats over the head with this and CNN for the next two years. And the Democrats were hoping this would be the stick they're going to bludgeon Trump with going into the 2020 elections, but now Trump has that in his hand and he's going to continue whacking them with it right through the election. This is devastating for the uh, opposition, for the resistance. This is a complete defeat for the resistance. They're going to keep fighting on, they're going to keep pretending that there was Russian hack, Russian collusion and so forth, but the, the, there's no evidence that's going to come forward, Mike, because as we both know, if there was any actual evidence, it would have been on the table probably during the election mm. in the last two months. I mean, they wouldn't leave, uh, leave something like that sort of laying around for later after Donald Trump got elected. So, mm. uh, so there is no evidence. We said that from the beginning, and uh, we'll stick with that.